Anne Robinson is a seminar presenter for Cambridge Assessment English and frequently gives seminars both in Spain and internationally. She is the author of Fun for Starters, Movers and Flyers 4th edition in collaboration with Cambridge University Press and contributes regularly to the online resource site World of Fun. And you can also follow Anne's own blog at teachingtogether.info. And we can see those links coming up in the chat now. So over to you, Anne. I think we need to unmute. Excellent. Anne, hello. Hello, I think I'm, I'm now unmuted. So can you just yes. confirm, everybody, that you can hear me? I can hear you, Anne. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Um, right, I was just looking through uh, the chat box there and noticing that um, we've got, wow, uh, we've possi very possibly got um, a place or a country from every letter of the alphabet, um, varying weather around the world. Uh, not grey and cloudy like here. I'm happy to read in some of your uh, places. And I'm sure it's actually night time in some of the places where you are. So today, uh, we're going to look at um, activities to develop writing skills and to practice writing with young learners. Oh, <laughs> I seem to have lost my slides here. Would this be right, Jenny? Any reason for that? OK. Hello, Jenny. Can you hear me? Hello. Um, yes. Hello, yes, I can hear you. We seem to have lost your slides. We do indeed. <laughs> I can't um, start without them. So we'll need them in a minute. So. Um, let me just see. Apologies, everyone. Technical <laughs> hitch. And I think we have them. Here we are. Thank you. OK, feel free to start, Anne. I'll just resize okay. these as you're talking. OK, I can't see the chat box either at the moment with everybody. I don't know whether that's a common problem. I can see, yeah. OK, anyway, let's get, let's get going. Um, so yes, so we're going to be looking at activities uh, to practice the skill of writing in your learners and to develop um, essential writing skills. So teachers of young learners who are, who are just starting to write and to learn to write are so lucky, I think you would agree, because writing, like so many other things at this age, is relatively or even totally new for them. They're still excited and they haven't usually decided that writing is difficult or boring. So it is important to try and keep writing an exciting activity. So a question to think about. Do your students write with the alphabet system, same alphabet system as English? I've just come back for a trip to China. And of course, for Chinese children, reading and writing in a language like English, which uses letters instead of characters, is extremely challenging. They have to learn to recognize the individual letters to read words and put them together to read words. And they also have to learn this new system, these new letters, to be able to write in English. They can't transfer their system to English. Whereas learners from Spain, where I live, have a huge starting advantage because they do use the same alphabet system. They can transfer their system, although obviously things like how the letters combine and how, are they, how they are pronounced will be different. But even if students do share the same alphabet system, they will still need to practice actually forming the letters. In the case of older students, they may think they are past this stage. 
But illegible writing is something that many teachers complain about. Do you have problems reading some of your students' writing? I bet you do. So why not make thinking about writing and actually forming letters a bit more cognitive? Even when they're not so young and not such beginners. If I show you the title of this webinar in a mixture of colors, which color do you prefer? Okay, blue seems to be quite popular, but we've also got pink, red, purple, blue sky, like that one. Okay. And which of the um, fonts do you prefer? So you might like a particular color, but which of the, the fonts, the letter types, do you prefer? Type the word for the words that you prefer, the fonts that you prefer. So if you're reading each other's replies, you can see we've got a huge variety of choices, just as it should be. Now I want you to put yourselves in the position of one of your students. Which color do you think they would prefer? And which font, which word would they prefer? Okay, we've got some font experts here, okay? Calibri 12, you say. Yes, so. Why not challenge your students to choose a font and write some words? They could write words, or they could write a sentence, or they could even write a text using a particular font and color of their choice. They can do this on tablets or computers and type. Or they could do it by hand using felt tips and crayons. Either way, they'll have some fun. And I'm sure your students will produce very different texts or very different looking texts. So copying and re rewriting words. At the age of six, seven, or eight, where writing is concerned, they're at the stage where they're still developing and experimenting with writing in their mother tongue. So often any kind of writing activity, and that even includes copying, has a certain novelty value for them. But remember, when you ask students to copy words, add a reason for copying. Add a little twist at the end. What do students have to do in this activity? What are the steps to the activity? What's the first thing that students have to do here? They have to find the same word, okay? And which is the same word? Which is the word that's repeated in the first line, on the first line there? Okay, the word that's um, repeated here is balloon. Okay, we've got part of the word balloon in the word ball, but we haven't got ball as a word twice. So they write the word on the line and then they draw a picture of a balloon. In the second uh, example, what would they draw or write in the box? They draw the, the, or write the letters of the alphabet, perhaps like this. OK, so we're not just asking them to copy words. We're asking them to find the same word. And then we're asking them to draw a picture. So the artists in our classrooms will enjoy the last stage of this, I'm sure. 
Writing often consolidates work that we've been doing on the other skills. Perhaps we've been listening and speaking and reading, and writing can consolidate language work that we've been doing. It adds hands and touch to ears and eyes. And I'd like to mention here that I'm not going to go into the sound spelling relationship because we don't have time in this webinar. It's important to remember that for some children in our classes, writing will be the activity that most helps them to remember language. The act of actually forming the letters or seeing them written will definitely make them more memorable for many of our students. And writing doesn't have to be one colour. What about these letters, rainbow letters? Let your students take out all the colours in their pencil cases and write the words and then colour them in rainbow letters or write them in rainbow letters. They can also uh, write them with uh, wax, white wax crayons here and then colour over the words to discover the words. Perhaps they could create a puzzle for somebody else in the class. So they write the words pass on their piece of paper, and the other students um, have to colour over to discover the words. And then perhaps they could draw the pictures for these words and finish the page. What about putting a long strip of paper, unrolling, for example, a roll of wallpaper or a, a big paper, put it on the floor and let them lie on the floor and write words on the on the carpet, on the paper carpet. They can paint their letters onto the, the paper and make a poster too. Or they can build words from rubber letters like this. Or they can stamp their words using stamps. Or this is an activity that I like to do with course books. So here I've taken a, a picture from Fun for Starters from Unit 32 and I've taken some little bookmark post-its and written the words of the, for the actions in this picture and we've stuck them to the picture. So this, you, your students could then have a, a very useful resource for them. They could label their pictures or even text throughout their course books by using this kind of activity. A word of warning or caution here. Remember always if you're providing a record for students of new vocabulary that uh, you go around and check what students have written in their notebooks when they've copied these words from the, the uh, from a word from the board, sorry, or from a text, because this is their permanent record, which they can come back to if they want to study. So, if there are any spelling mistakes, those spelling mistakes will be reinforced if we haven't checked those. And this is especially true in the case of dyslexic students who you might have in your classrooms. They need special attention to check that they're not copying things and uh, changing the order of letters or omitting letters, for example. Um, one, another point actually um, useful possibly with dyslexic students is as they're copying the words from the board, spell the words out loud for them because this will help dyslexic students. It will also help other students and it will reinforce the spelling of the words. So many of the ideas that we've just seen could also work for writing sentences. They can write rainbow sentences. They can stamp sentences. They can build sentences with letters like this. So in class, you could challenge your students to build or stamp the sentence they hear. This is something that I've been working on. I've been uh, using old magazines, 
cutting out words in, as you can see, in different fonts and different sizes. And I've got a collection of these words. I've got them uh, saved in, in different boxes. OK, so I've got things like articles, nouns, adjectives, singular nouns, plural nouns, verbs in different boxes. Um, and then I get them out and ask students to make sentences. So this is a sentence that I created um, with some of the words that I cut out. I also made this um, sentence, have a great holiday. And I started playing around with this. So I changed, which word in the sentence did I change here in these four examples? Yeah, so I, I changed the word great, and I've given you have a green holiday, have a simple holiday, have a slow holiday, have a pretty holiday. And this led to me, uh, led me to thinking about um, then talking about what these different kinds of holidays could involve. So if you, if I say have a slow holiday, where would you go for a slow holiday? Is there a place that you know that would be great to go to for a slow holiday? Sven says at home, Navarro in the mountains, the beach, or a wellness oasis. I really like that sound of that. I'll come with you, Sven. Spa, oh, yes. OK. And what would you do on your slow holiday? Yeah, these sound like great ideas. And another question, what wouldn't you do on your slow holiday? Michael would not move. So you wouldn't eat or you'd get somebody to serve you because you'd be at this beautiful spa, Michael Birch. Yeah, you probably wouldn't hurry everywhere, would you? And how would you feel? Patricia would feel bored, so you don't like the idea of slowing down, Patricia. I personally do. <laughs> and what, how wouldn't you feel on your slow holiday? OK, so I think we've got some people who might find it difficult to go on a slow holiday. OK, so by showing the students these different sentences or even getting them to create them, they can then ask each other questions about things they would do or wouldn't do on each of these um, holidays. Um, and I, I, I think it stimulates you know, great uh, conversation and exchange of ideas here. OK, um, have a great holiday. OK, I showed you, I changed the adjectives in those four variations on my original uh, sentence. Can you change one word in this sentence? Maybe not the adjective, because I've shown you some examples. Could you change another word in this sentence? Yeah, we'd have a great weekend, have a great day, have a great game. Yeah, Raoul says he changed the verb, so which other verb could we use instead of have? Enjoy. OK, 
Okay. Could we change the tense of the verb? Okay, we would be making it a bit longer if we said, did you have? Okay, but that would turn it into a question. Okay, yeah, we could have having a great holiday, having a great time, we could then vary. Enjoying a great holiday. Okay, here's some examples from me. Okay. So um, if you've got old magazines, then it's very easy to create um, these kind of um, cut up words in the different uh, fonts and colors and get your students to, to make these kind of sentences and then use them for these interactive activities. Okay, so they're not actually writing physically, okay, but they are creating these sentences and thinking very much, I think, about the structure of sentences. Okay, um, I showed you uh, fun for starters earlier, and I wanted to show you how we could also use this for movers level. Okay, so this is fun for movers. It's a, a three picture story about pirates. And uh, what I've done this time, I hope you can see, is instead of writing words, I've written sentences about the three pictures, again with mini post-it slips. And this is really good practice for the new Movers Part 6 writing task that students now have to do, where they have to write sentences about a picture. And if we zoom in on the second picture, you can see I've written three sentences about these, this picture. I've written that it's hot and sunny. I've written that I can see pineapples, coconuts, and bananas in this picture. And I've written the pirates are on an island. Now you can see that I've got quite a lot of the picture where I haven't got any sentences. So could you help me to cover this picture with sentences? Could you write a sentence for the right hand side of the picture there with a tree maybe yeah a pirate is climbing a tree for the middle of the picture yeah the pa uh, a parrot is eating a banana the parrot is hungry Okay, so we've got the tree there, climbing up the palm tree. We've got the parrot here eating a banana. And we've got, oh yeah, for the left, yeah, one pirate is cutting a pineapple. Okay. What about the space between the pirate who's cutting the pineapple and the pirate who's got the parrot? Can you give me a sentence for that part of the picture? Yeah, Tessa, there is a pirate hat between two pirates. Brilliant, okay. So I'm sure that if we could physically put our little post-its on this picture, that we would manage to cover it completely, okay? For example, if we wanted to cover more of the sky, we could write a sentence with, there are no clouds in the sky. Okay, so we can do this in books and recently at seminars I've been sharing similar activities based around posters. So you can see some teachers here at a seminar doing the, a similar activity to the one we've just seen with the pirates, but this time we used bigger posters, sorry, bigger post-its and we used a poster and we had it on the wall. Uh, these, post these posters that I've got here, uh, here um, are from the Cambridge Assessment English website. You can download a PDF version, or you may be able to request them from your local assessment office. So I put them on the walls, and then teachers covered 
the posters or tried to cover the posters uh, with sentences like this. Uh, but as Ross has just pointed out, actually, it could be any kind of posters that you have. Yeah, it doesn't have to be these. They, these are ideal for young learners because they're designed for young learners, but you could use any kind of picture. And in fact, I'd also use this activity for talking about photographs. If any of you um, prepare for the B1 preliminary test or B2 first certificate uh, exam, you can also use this activity to practice describing the photographs and comparing the photographs for B2 first. OK, so uh, in this case, you can see that um, the teachers have written sentences about different parts of the poster. But in uh, Movers re uh, Reading and Writing Part 6, they also have to complete two sentences and they also have to answer two questions. So you could use the same activity and give them gap fill sentences with missing words. And you could also uh, get them or you can write questions about different things and people in the, po in the poster, perhaps for another group who then have to lift up the poster and answer the question. Okay. And you can also, I've also used this um, activity for things that people are saying. Okay, so let's look again at the third picture in the pirate story. So let's imagine I was giving you, say, three or four uh, small post-its. And this time, you're not going to write sentences, but you're going to write things that the pirates are thinking or saying, or that the pirate, the parrot is thinking or saying. So what, 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 might, what might you write on your post-it? I want a pair of shoes, Letitia says, yes. Uh, the pirate on the far left there could well do with, with some shoes, especially if his partner's not a very good dancer. Um, Daniela, he's a great dancer. I like dancing so much. I'm rich, yeah. The, the pirate in the middle is very rich, very, being very good and very happy. And the pirate on the right is singing, don't worry, be happy. Yeah. Okay. Or what about if we think that the pirate against the tree and the parrot are singing. Which song are they singing? Can you write the words for their song? Hakuna Matata sounds quite a good one. Oh, happy day. Macarena. OK, yes, yeah, so your students could add the lyrics to the song and put some speech bubbles coming out of the parrot's mouth and the pirate's mouth and add the words to the song, okay? And they'll be practicing writing um, and adding again their own interpretation of the story and the picture. Now let's look at another writing activity that my students really enjoy. For this activity, you need a scene picture like the ones in A1 Movers Listening, part one, or in Reading and Writing, part six. This one here comes from Fun for Movers, and it's designed to practice the listening part one. So for this activity, each student needs a piece of paper or a notebook. And they work in groups of four or five students. Ideally, get your students to sit in a circle if possible. So tell your students to think of a sentence about this picture, but they shouldn't say their, picture, their sentence out loud. Okay, so everybody has got a sentence in their head. And then you say, okay, can you write the first word of your sentence? And students write the first word of their sentence. 
Okay, so let's look at some examples. So we've got four students here, and they've each written a different first word to their sentence. Then we pass on our pieces of paper or our notebooks to the student on our left, who then reads the word that they have just received and continues the sentence. They write the second word in the sentence. Okay, so you can see we've now got two words in each sentence. Okay, again, the pieces of paper and the notebooks are passed on to the next student on the left, and they write the third word in the sentence. And then the pieces of paper or notebooks are passed on again. And what does the next student write? They write the fourth word. Now you can see that D here has actually finished their sentence. They think it's complete. So they put a full stop at the end. But the other sentences aren't finished yet. I mean, they could be. We could finish C and A. But these students want to continue the sentence. So again, they pass on their sentences to the next person. And in each case, the sentences are then finished. And student C should have put a full stop there at the end. So we should correct that. Okay. Or when the person gets back, their piece of paper with a sentence, they should check there is a full stop at the end and put it if it isn't there. Okay, so we're, we've got four sentences in this case which are circulating between these four students and each student is adding a new word to the sentence until the sentence is complete. You can also do this with students writing a whole sentence and then passing on their piece of paper. And each, each uh, student then adds a new different sentence to the piece of paper or notebook that they have in front of them. OK, well, I'm going to look now at writing a story, because this is something that students who take the A2 flyers test now have to do in part seven of the reading and writing te uh, test. Now, this can appear to be a very challenging task, but we can train our students to do it well and to show what they know. So, we have a story here. We've got three pictures like they would get in the flyers task. I'm going to show you the pictures one by one. Okay, so what I would do, I would ask you to write 10 words for each picture. So can you write 10 words in the chat box? I suggest you type your 10 words before you press enter so that your 10 words all come together. Uh, random words, yeah, well, random to, up to, to a certain extent, they should be uh, words that you could use to talk about the story in the picture. Yeah, so instead of writing one word and pressing enter, it would be better if you write type your 10 words and then press enter. Okay, so great, Navarro and Janatu. Okay, you, you've got given me 10 words here. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to show you the second picture from this story. And again, I'd like you to uh, think of 10 words.
Okay, we've got some wonderful suggestions here. And now I'm going to show you the third picture. And again, 10 words. Okay, some wonderful words and lots of nice adjectives, which I always like in stories, so well done. Okay, any of your words the same as my words here for the first picture? They don't have to be the same, of course, okay? These are just my 10 words. And for the second picture? And for the third picture. Okay, so if we see the words together now with the three pictures, which word is in all three pictures? Yeah, children is the word that's in all three pictures because in the fact in the second picture we can't actually see any of the fire officers or firefighters, although obviously they must be there in the background somewhere. Okay, so the story is very much about this chil the children and their visit to the fire station. Okay, so we've got our words. Um, I mentioned this in a previous webinar, this activity, but I wanted to uh, reinforce the importance of this because we now have the uh, mark scheme for the Flyers Part 7 writing task. So in order to get one mark, uh, writing the story should include some English, some English words which are discernible by the reader. So students can get one mark by simply writing some English words. We want to try and encourage them to experiment and to do well, and for everybody to be able to do this task to the best of their ability. So if they write words, they'll get one mark. And then from our words, we can put together maybe some phrases. So you can see some phrases now amongst the words I've got for the pictures. I've joined some of them together. Um, and this would then give us two marks on the, the Flyers Part 7 writing scheme. So again, moving from words up to phrases as an important um, thing to be aware of for students. And this is how their writing should develop. Yeah, so we've got some phrases here. And then we've got a simple story here using the words that I thought of initially and the phrases. Okay, so this is quite a good story, but it's quite simple. And a good story so that we can connect more, we would um, ask the students what they think the names of these people are. So, what's a good name for the teacher? Who's the fire officer? What are the names of some of the children? This is purple, yes, good suggestion because of a purple skirt there, perhaps. Mary, it could be a first um, name. We could call them kids, okay, but it might be nice to use a couple of um, names for the students, wouldn't it? Okay, so here is my uh, suggestion, okay, uh, it could be Miss Trim, and Matt is the fire officer, and the students are from class seven. 
Okay, but I've still got quite short sentences here. How many sentences have I got in my story? And could you join any of these sentences together, perhaps? What about this one? I've told you when these things are happening. Yeah, and we could join together the first two sentences. So we'd say on Monday morning, Miss Trim and Class 7 are visiting the city fire station where Matt, the fire officer, is explaining. So we can have some longer and shorter sentences. Our sentences, good writing shouldn't be all long sentences, but it shouldn't be all short sentences. So let's train our students to produce both of them in their writing. What have I added now to the story? Yes, I've added dialogue. I've added what they're thinking and what they're saying. And now my story is becoming so much more real and interesting, I think you would agree. Yes, and certainly our students could add speech bubbles even to the pictures and really illustrate the story. So, this is a very important tip actually. Sometimes students can't find the words that they need to describe what's happening in a story, in a picture. This could be in a speaking text or it could be in the writing text. So tip is get students to think or what the people might be saying or thinking at that moment. And very often they can get over this hurdle of not being able to describe something by saying, and the teacher is saying, and the children are thinking, and they can tell the story. Okay, who is telling this story? So read the story and tell me who is telling the story. Yeah, so in the first example that I showed you before, we had a third person narrator, somebody who wasn't in the story. But why not get your students to become one of the people in the story? In this case, the teacher. And we could ask um, them then to write the story from Matt, the fire officer's point of view. Yeah, so in this case, Matt might write, on Monday morning, Class 7 visited our fire station. I explained everything to the children. Then we went to our changing room, uh, or, or we let the students uh, put on our jackets and helmets. It was very funny. They laughed a lot. Or they could take um, Steve or Jane's point of view. Okay, so Steve or Jane could be uh, the girl who's just come down the slide in the third picture, or the boy in the green jumper in the second picture who's trying on the jacket and the helmet. And they uh, tell the, the story from their point of view. Okay, and this is a very important um, skill to develop to see information and stories from different people's point of view. Um, and yes, as Maz just said, they, they would love it if they could be the actors in the story. Yes, they could act out the story um, while they're telling the story. 
Okay, so thank you for watching this webinar. And I hope you've taken away some ideas and that there will, there will be activities that you can use in your class to practice writing and to develop your, your students' writing skills. Thank you very much for giving up your time today. Many thanks for such an interesting session, Anne. Um, I'm sure I can see from the chat that everyone's really enjoyed that. Um, we'll shortly be moving on to our question and answer session. So if you do have any questions for Anne, please type them in the chat box and we'll get to them shortly. Um, while you're thinking, we've got a few slides here just to tell you a bit about the Cambridge materials that can also help you with young learners and young learners tests. So while we're going through these, Think of your questions and put them in the chat box. OK, so we're going to tell you a little bit about the official preparation materials. Some of you may already be familiar with these. We have Fun for Starters, Movers and Flyers, 4th edition. This is co-authored by Anne Robinson, and it's now in its 4th edition. Um, it works really well alongside a general English course. Um, the syllabus fully covers um, pre-A1 starters, A1 movers, and A2 flyers. Those are the exams that used to be known as the Young Learners exams. And these books come with online activities for students and a fun vocabulary app. Secondly, this is our full suite of preparation materials for the revised exams. That's the exams that um, are new this year. Story Fun 2nd Edition offers six levels of story-based skills practice, and it includes a home fun booklet. Kids Box Updated 2nd Edition is a seven-level full primary course and now contains officially validated content to prepare for the revised exams. It also has many, many features that you'd expect from a general English course, um, chill projects, social values, phonics, and online practice. And then on the far right there, you can see our practice test um, two sets of these are now available. Again, they're all new for the revised exam. And then lastly, we've also created a World of Fun website. Again, many of you may already be familiar with this. It's our online hub for information, resources, and teaching. Um, these are just some of the resources that we have available on there. There are teaching tips videos, articles. We have story video samples webinar recordings. Um, this webinar will be featured on World of Fun shortly. Um, we've also got drama, creative drama activities. There's a booklet you can download, and there are videos very shortly which will be available to accompany this and help show you how to use drama in the classroom. We have writing booklets for movers and flyers, and also samples of all of our published preparation materials. So that's all about our materials. Um, hopefully, we have some questions for Anne. Um, Anne, are you there again? Let's unmute you. Uh, yes, have I got any questions? Uh, okay, let's, let's have, a look. have we got any? Questions. Uh, I mean, I've got I've got one here from Nava, um, Michelle Navarro. Uh, is there a book for teachers for these kinds of activities? Um, some of the activities come from the teachers' books for the Fun Four series. Um, some of the certainly the last few uh, activities that I shared with you, the one about thinking for words, think about words for the pictures. Um, that comes from the Write Flyers Writing Booklet. Um, which is available from World of Fun, which you've just mentioned. I, I wrote that booklet. Um, so part of those activities are in there. Um, and I'm, I'm still, I'm going to write a final third uh, post for you uh, on, the, on the story uh, writing activities. So that will go up next week, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. And as you can see on the... Um on the left here, you can now download your attendance certificate if you need to. Um, this won't work on a portable device, so please save the link um, and use it on a desktop computer. 
or you can email us after the event if you've got difficulty downloading that. Um, let's just see if we've got any more questions for Anne. Um, uh, there is one here from Janital uh, saying that uh, you know, teaching English to adults is uh, sometimes very difficult um, and kids' materials are very often so much more fun. So is it okay if we use them with adult learners? Of course. Um, uh, yes, I mean, you, you might have to adapt them slightly, but you could also, um, I, I, one thing I like to do with all my classes is get them to imagine that they're not themselves. So I'm not seven right now, or I'm not um, 50 right now, um, but I'm a child, uh, or I'm my grandmother, or I'm my baby cousin, um, and how they would feel or react. Yeah, for example, what would your grandmother do on a slow holiday? Maybe it wouldn't be very difficult, different from your for your grandmother because she's used to maybe not rushing around. Um, what would uh, a six year old do? Perhaps your six year old uh, younger brother or sister would be totally bored on a slow holiday. So um, getting them to become different people that they know uh, can also give them a different point of view, as we just saw, saw with the story um, activities there at the end. So you can do that with adults as well, and as I say, you can, you can adapt them. Um, the, the teachers who did the putting the posters on the posters that um, I showed you photos of, they're obviously adults. Um, but the activity works well with them and it also works well with uh, with children, perhaps, you know, changing the poster, making it a more adult poster, perhaps, than the one I, um, I showed you. Uh, I've also got a question here, uh, I, or a comment. I, I think this kind of activities consume a lot of class time. Um, most of the activities I shared with you um, would only take, I reckon, about 10, 15 minutes of your class time. But I think they're very often uh, a way of consolidating work that you've been doing up to this. And with young learners, it is extremely important to make sure you have a change of pace approximately every 10, 15 minutes. Um, and to get them working maybe on a different activity or with a different medium, uh, getting them up, moving them around. So I think, I don't think any of the activities would take up too much class time. And I think they all have a, a real pedagogical aim so that they're worth whatever time they take. <laughs> uh, how do I deal with differentiation in, in writing? Well, um, if you remember, I don't know whether you do remember that, but we had the um, the assessment scale there for the flyers writing. If you notice, um, students who maybe um, are only able to write individual words for that task can still get a mark and still feel as though they've done that task. Um, whereas students who um, are perhaps way above the level of, of the rest of your students in your class they could also write a story, but you could challenge them to write more words or to not repeat words throughout the story and use a variation. So I think we, I think if we, we can use the same task, um, but it would be the outcome that I, I think could be um, acceptable and used in a class where we've got real, uh, a real variety of levels. Uh, Yulia, you're saying how many words should flyers write? Right, in the instructions, it writes, it says write 20 or more words. Um, in trialing of tasks, um, the good students were writing about 50 words. So I would say if your students are quite strong, then that's what I would say to them would be a good number for them to aim for. Um, and because 20 words, really, if you saw my very simple uh, story, I was already going beyond 20 words. So I would say definitely more than 20. And if you're, they're, they're really good students who've got lots of language to draw on and you've trained them to use things like the linking and the adjectives and the feelings, then um, they could be aiming for about 50. Yes, Yulia, I would say uh, 50 would be my, for, for a strong student, don't give, say, 50 to somebody who is, you know, not able, 
at, at all to write 50, uh, then they could go for 20 perfectly well. Okay, that looks as if that's all of the questions. Does anyone have any last minute questions? There's just one question yeah. about movers. Movers would just be sentences, Yulia, um, Yulia so that it wouldn't be um, a question of words, it would be a question of sentences. And again, stronger students could write longer sentences. Okay, well that's just about all we've got time for then. Thank you everyone for coming and attending, giving up your time. Um, if you do like to get some more ideas for preparing children for the Young Learners Test, don't forget to visit World of Fun for our most up-to-the-minute tips and resources. You can see the URL in the chat there. Um, the recording of today's webinar should be live on our blog and YouTube channel by next week. And don't forget to download your certificate from the link on the screen or email us afterwards if that's not working for you at the moment. Um, big thank you to everyone. Thank you to Anne, Jessica and Stuart. And we hope you'll, we'll see you at our next webinar. Yes, thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Anne. Bye. Bye, everyone.